Good afternoon from Universal Orlando. We are here today for a special media event. We are getting a hard hat tour of the new roller coaster that is coming this year called Penguin Trek. You guys know I love hard hat tours. I love seeing the progress of roller coasters. I love getting a close up look at the track and all the different elements of it. Very excited for this one. And because we're here, might as well ride some roller coasters too. So let's go inside, get checked in, have a look around the hard hat area, the roller coaster progress, and then we'll go and we'll ride some rides. So let's go. All right, we are all dressed up and ready to go. Got our hard hat on. These are not the safety glasses. We got some safety glasses down there and my vest. We're headed through SeaWorld, headed back to the construction site. So we've made it into SeaWorld. Basically the front gate is right behind us, heading towards Manta right now. Just walking past Manta. And they're going up the lift hill right now. We'll be back to ride that a little bit later. And we can start to see Penguin Trek come into view over here. The white track being Penguin Trek and the blue being Manta. Look at how close the two come to each other. And of course, Penguin Trek will be in the Antarctica section of the park. So there's a family coaster. You can see some of the kids on it in the concept art. Coming spring of 2024. We're making it towards the back of the park, coming across Journey to Atlantis. All this area is walled off right now. We're starting to see some of the groundwork construction now that we have made it into the Antarctica section. This is where Empire of the Penguin used to be. All new construction right here. We're heading a little bit deeper into the construction area. So it's the same Antarctica land that we had before, but they're making some oh, here we go. in here for the new track. It's really cool. We have a new entry. Oh, we got some... Right here? Okay. Got some blueprints. Uh, where we are right now in, in the project is where uh, we've come quite a long way outside. You've noticed that all of our track is in place. We're doing a lot of the work inside, so you haven't been able to see a lot, a lot of that progress. So we're happy that today we get to show you how far we've come inside. Uh, along with the Penguin Trek ride, we're also taking one of my favorite places in the park, Antarctica, and we're bringing it back to a, a refreshed, beautiful state, uh, really embracing this area of the park. The theme of this ride has a very expeditionary feel. So imagine we've had Antarctica here for, for over a decade now, and we've the explorers have had some time. You know, they've, they've built things, they've moved in, so we're a little bit more established in our outpost. And so what you'll see in the theming is, in addition to all the ice, the glaciers, and rocks, and things that you're used to in Antarctica, you're going to see corrugated metal textures, uh, what, what you think of as expeditionary structures that are built into the ice and onto the ice, and so they, they extend what's happening inside to the outside. So all these new things that we're adding are giving you that additional feel that brings this whole place back to life, and also just refreshing all the ice and, and, the, and the scenic that you see around. So you're really going to have a sense of place when you come here. On today's walk, we're going to walk through the realm. We're going to go under the track. We're going to go inside in what we call the show box and walk in reverse out of the queue and end up right back here. We'll do a little Q&A. A little bit closer look at the site plan. And you can see the track comes out of the building and then follows the whole track around right there. And then we can look at the inside of the building where the track goes through what seems like it might be like a uh, dark ride section and then launches out into the outdoor section. And then also in this area is Expedition Cafe. And they said that they're adding a new outdoor bar section where they will have frozen drinks and beers. And then Glacial Collections over here was an existing gift shop, but they have stated that they are building a gift shop here at the exit of the ride. So you will exit through a gift shop coming off the ride. They did also say that we're getting a lot of different refreshes as well, refreshing the ice. They did some demo to kind of open up the area over here. You can see where some of the rock work or some of the ground is all exposed right here with some open area here. So yeah, you can see this is a demolition that they have done already to kind of open up the area and make it flow a little bit better. They also said that Expedition Cafe, which when it closed had three food offering locations, is going to be adding a fourth one. So when it reopens, there will be four different food options inside of Expedition Cafe. So now we're making our way underneath the roller coaster track to get a little bit closer look at it. So this is a launched coaster and you can see they have this styrofoam here protecting the launch fins from any sort of damage they might encounter during the construction. So you see it'll come out of the building here, have a launch up and over, and then we'll return back this way. See, they have some 
concept art of the internal show scenes. This is a uh, concept art for all the rock work and the scenic that you're going to see inside the building on our next stop. But you'll see on the launch coming out, our next stop will have us on the inside of the launch. So you're going to see what happens just before you fly out of the building. This behind me is launch one. And we have some, some uh, images here I'm going to refer to. But launch one is where you escape the icy trail inside. So you come out what we call the show box and you launch out at 31 miles per hour into this turn. This is an awesome view. I think it's going to be a great experience for guests both on the ride and off the ride. Um, it really adds a lot of life to this area. So as we leave the station, we're going to see where our explorers have stopped. This is about as far as, as humans have gone on, the, on that journey. Now we're going to be on our snowmobile train, so we have a you know special little extra edge with our transportation, and we're going to cruise right by this. And after this, we're going to have a huge vista view where we get to see the penguins in their natural habitat. Now the look and feel of this ride is, is entirely different from what we had before. You may remember from the previous ride, we were on a journey with Puck, who was a character that we created to, to symbolize you know, that, that birth and growth of, of a penguin in the wild. But here, uh, the theming is very natural, and it's about us as explorers going out to see penguins in their natural habitat. So the look and the feel and the textures, everything we're doing here is to create that feeling of an expedition with real penguins in their real environment. And as you well know, this will all lead you to our, our habitat, which is a world-class representation of the natural penguin habitat. There's another little close-up look at the rest of the track. We can kind of see the launch goes up here, and it banks around here. And we start doing lots of turns and dips and dives. I think it'll be a really fun ride. It is a family coaster, and it's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. It kind of traverses this whole area, and it looks like it's going to be fun. Now we're going to start to make our way inside of the building just on the other side of launch. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of the scenic work that's happening and also see some more of the track inside of the building. And this is where the track turns and makes its way back into the building. Oh yeah, we got a lot of rock work that's going in here. And we are right up against this track. And it definitely is like a little dark ride inside of here. Oh yeah, this is exciting. I love this. Ooh, and it's going to be very exciting heading out. This is the launch right here that goes outside of the building. That is very, very exciting. I cannot wait to ride this. We're starting to see some more of the concept art out here too. Uh-oh, danger, falling ice. Heading out the launch like that. Look at that. There it is, the track's just right there. Welcome everyone, this is the show box as we call it. So uh, as we said before, this is an indoor outdoor ride. Uh, you start out in the station as you begin your expedition. First place you dispatch into is over here. So that area I was showing you with the snowmobiles and where we are today is basically right here. So if you see this U-turn, it looks a little cut off from the, the rendering, but on the right hand side, that's where you've made the entrance into this room. So you've gone just past those snowmobiles. And so at this point, you are farther than anyone's gone on foot, right? So you've made it here in our snowmobile um, train. And where you stand today, it's gonna to be a giant screen. So if you look beneath you, you're gonna see kind of a piece of tape on the ground that, that uh, resembles where the screen is gonna go. Do you see this red line on the ground right here? That is a screen that grows from floor to ceiling. And that's where there will be a projection of penguins in their natural habitat. So when you're on this side of the track, you won't be able to see it. You'll come out of this you know, like ice tunnel. This is big vista right here of penguins out on the ice fields. And then you'll kind of go back into a tunnel. And that's where it starts to get dangerous. And you're really going through tunnels here. And the rocks start to fall, start to fall, start to fall. And then you're like trying to speed out of here. And you speed out of the building on a chase through the Antarctic wilderness. So if you can kind of remember Empire of the Penguin, this is a whole area. This was the track layout here. All the trackless vehicles were riding around in this area here, all throughout here. This will be a fun little element right here where you're coming through trying to avoid some of the falling rocks. You do a little dip and a turn right there because this will all be kind of slow moving through here like a dark ride and then a little quick moment right there. That'll be fun. We've made it a little bit further into kind of the show scene section. This is just after that dip and we're going up and over on the scaffolding bridge. So you can see that little dip right there. It'll be kind of an exciting section of it. Oh, so this is the load right here where you get on 
and then you start and this is where if you remember the concept art this is where that snowmobile was you kind of come around you do the little dip here and then you start to oh that was the reveal over there too where that big screen was you do a little dip and then you start to get into the falling ice section and you scoot around and then the launch goes out of the building over there so it does get into the action pretty quick like really quick as a matter of fact because this is the load section that's like the inclusion thing right there for people who stick their arms out. So they did tell us that there are three trains, 18 riders per train. Estimated ride time of 144 seconds. This is the load right here. And this is the unload that we're standing right now. So very, you know, the same that you would imagine. Like you get on as people are getting off. And you can see this is where it comes back into the building right here. You can kind of see come through and over top of the ride and then come down to get in line. So you can see two maintenance rails back there in the maintenance bay and then the third maintenance maintenance area would be here in the loading bay. And it's interesting too because you can see all of the different maintenance areas underneath the track down there. So the height requirement here is 42 inches with a, an accompanying air person that is 51 inches. If you're over 51 you can ride it by yourself. Now we are making our way backwards through the queue. This is maintenance bay back here. Oh yeah, there it is back there. We kind of exited the building. This isn't how you will exit the building, but we're back out at the entrance portal where all of the warning signs and everything will be and the wait times and such will be right here. So track length is great. We have over 3,000 feet of track on this ride. We're really excited about that. It's going to be a really, really great experience. The show section is about 40 seconds, so you're really going to be in that show box. Um, well, you know, 40 seconds may not sound like a lot for a ride that is actually a very substantial amount of time, and we're very excited about that. When you, when you leave the building for launch one, uh, it'll be 31 miles an hour, and then max speed will be out of launch tune up and over this jaw turn right here, and that'll be a max speed of, of 43 miles an hour. A as we mentioned, the minimum rider height is 42 inches. We're really proud of that. It'll be one of the first coasters at this park that has that rider height, so we're really, really excited about that family experience that we're bringing to all of our guests. Peak track height is 65 feet. That about does it for us from the inside of the construction area. Now I'm gonna go get something to eat and try to ride some rides. So we were standing kind of back there, this is what they were calling, they call this the jaw turn, which is the highest point on the coaster at 65 feet. And you can kind of see where the launch comes out of the building way back there. Just kind of goes around, what do you call it? They call it an uphill flip-flop, something like that. But there was an element here as it comes out of the launch and goes uphill towards this turn. It just looks like it's gonna have a lot of really fun elements. And this huge banking turn right here. I think it's gonna be a really good time and I'm interested to see how it looks with its with Mako running at the same time, like how close they will come to each other. Just after this turn, nobody's on Mako right now, but right there, they would come very close to each other. And it'll be really neat to see as they're interacting with each other, they're so close to each other. So I'm just kind of making my way up towards the front of the park to see if I can find something to eat and maybe ride a couple of rides. I don't think Mako is up and running quite yet. So we'll probably head over towards Icebreaker and Pipeline. As you can kind of see, we've made it back up to the lighthouse at the front of the park. We're gonna turn in this direction past Coaster Coffee Company and start heading a little bit further into the park, heading towards Icebreaker and Pipeline. Okay. Such an interesting look at Pipeline and even more interesting because this is a backstage area. They're saying this way to Pipeline, the surf coaster. And something to note is that I am looking for food, but we can't do any of the Seven Seas Food Festival stuff because it is only available on the weekends. They also have an advertisement here for the St. Patrick's Day celebration, March 7th through 10th and 14th through 17th. Streets of Green, Irish Step Dancers and Tastes of Ireland, 1 p.m. to park close. But this is also taking advantage of the Seven Seas Food Festival because there is an Irish market here. I feel like it's been a long time since I've eaten at Seafire Grill. I kind of want this chicken tender sandwich. It looks good. A little bit spicy. Some french fries in there too. Yeah, let's get it. They got kids meals. Looks like it's just basically a chicken restaurant though. So I'm gonna be getting the crispy chicken sandwich. Sort of a seasoned fries for $17.49. I gotta admit, this is a little bit disappointing because not only is there no sauce on the chicken tenders, but there's no seasoning on the fries. So I got a little bit of ranch on here and then there's some Texas peat hot sauce that I can put on there. Uh, also, I got chicken tender sandwich, a cookie, and a bottle of water, and it was $32.64. I got my Texas peat hot sauce on there, got my ranch, put it right on top and we'll give it a bite, see how it tastes. I feel like I made it look somewhat similar to the picture up on the menu. Let's give it a try and see how it tastes. 
That's kind of good. One of my chicken tenders fell out of the sandwich. I mean, it is pretty good. It's not bad at all. Now we got some good news. A little bit of seasoning on those fries down there. All right, now that we're all done eating, time to get on some roller coasters. Pipeline is definitely running. Let's see. Looks like people are on Icebreaker. Yep, Icebreaker is running. There it goes. So let's get on these two first. All right, the line doesn't look too bad, but I know that they're not really running it as often as I feel like they can. Let's see what the wait time says. The sign says it's about a 20 minute wait. So let's put our camera in the locker and we'll get on it. It's interesting because it says it's a 20 minute wait, but there's like hardly anybody in line. Now these trains are taking a long time to load and dispatch for sure. When we were in the ride building for Penguin Trek, we could see these little squirrel cage fans that were blowing on the launch fins. There they go, this is the first dispatch since we've been in line. You can say there's not a lot of people in line. There's like maybe like three trains ahead of us. There's only one train on the track. That's probably why this is taking so long. All right, we're on. Also, back row. He told us the waves are fast. You guys ready? Oh, the line got long. The, oh, here we go. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys my feet. Cause this is the best part right here. You ready? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then upside down. Whoa! <laughs> Up off the ground. It's a good time. Oh, it's such a good ride. All right, now that we're done with Pipeline, I want to head over to Icebreaker. And that's over there. It's on the other side of the stadium. This section is blocked off right here. So I have to go back over to this bridge over here to cross over to Icebreaker. Also, sunset at SeaWorld, beautiful. So we made it over the bridge. The app says that it's a 10 minute wait. So hopefully it'll be nice and short. All right, we made it across the bridge. And now we're going to be turning right down this path to head to Icebreaker. Just before we get to Icebreaker, there is an Icebreaker gift shop. And they've got some Mardi Gras stuff. Where have you been yay all my life? It's fun and exciting. And some boas. And then of course, Icebreaker merch. So the app said 10, but when we get here, it says 25. Well, let's get in line though. Look at that moonshot there at the top. Also like that they added brakes up there just in case. It wasn't much more than maybe like 15 minutes that we were waiting. We're on the next train. All right. I remember when we first rode this, we were trying to come up with icebreakers. Things that were like ways to start a conversation. That was fun. It's also such a neat system for getting us out there. Also, I'm in the back row. As you can see, we're going to scoot out on this and connect with the track back here. And then our first launch is backwards. So you guys ready? Here we go. Whee! Ooh, also, this is a Beyond 90 spike. So when you're in the very back row like this, we definitely go past 90. Also, I like this because it feels like it's broken, but it's not. So we're going backwards now. <laughs> oh, the back row of this ride has such a kick. It's so good. Yeah, look at this. Ooh, yeah, that was good. Let's go. Eee. Ugh, so much air time. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> like out of the seat half the time. Ah. Ah. Oh, it's so good. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh. This ride's so much fun. It really is a good ride. Whee. Brakes. Ah. Yeah. What? That was fun. Let's see if we can get, uh, see if we can, see if we can get over and ride Mako maybe before the park closes. It's like six o'clock right now, so we only have one hour left. So the park closes at seven. It's six now. I think that or it's like six fifteen. That gives us enough time probably to get over to Mako and ride one more ride before we have to leave. So we were over there at Icebreaker. All we've done is just walk down this path now. We're headed over to Mako. 
much. I don't know what the wait time is for Mako. Hopefully it's not too long. Well, it looks like it's just five minutes. Let's go. Let's go on Mako. So we're just gonna follow the path around and kind of turn back that way towards Mako. As we're making our way around towards Mako, it is a little wild to me that Infinity Falls is still running. Nobody's on it. Like there's nobody in line to ride it because it's a little bit chilly out right now. Like they're running the boats empty. It's like 63 degrees out and uh, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it's too cold for me. Okay, looking at it from far away, it looked like it said five, but it really said 15. No big deal though. Let's get on. All right, we're doing it. We are heading on to Mako. I'm excited, I love this roller coaster. Such a good one. Love to see it. No line at all. Back row. We love it. Love the back row. It's a good day. We got to see a little preview of Penguin Trek. We got to ride Pipeline. We got to ride Icebreaker. Now we're riding Mako. Can't get any better. We should also be able to see, we can see a little bit of Penguin Trek over there. We'll see it when we're at the top, for sure. This is the tallest roller coaster in the park, too. Like, Look at it. It's just beautiful. The beautiful sunset and everything. Oh yeah, see there's all the penguin track back there. Right there. You can see everything. You can see the Orlando Eye. It's a beautiful night. Let's do it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I love this ride. It's so good. Whee! <laughs> Whoa! Here we go, a little air time. <laughs> oh, coming out of the seat so much. Such a good ride. Oh, look at that. Wish they didn't have the trim brakes here, but still coming out of the seat by a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So good. So good. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> brakes. Oh. Woo! More air time here. I don't know if I get to show you guys how much I'm out of the seat. Like, just flying everywhere. It's so good. Oh, such a fun ride. And then this one. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love this ride. I feel like I can touch that. It's so close. You can see there's a little bit of construction happening over here. They're building an on site hotel over there. All right, now that we're done with Mako, that's about all the time that we have here at the park. The park's gonna be closing very soon, so we're gonna make our way up to the front. Such a good day. We got to get a little preview of Penguin Trek. We got to ride Pipeline, their newest coaster. We got to ride Icebreaker, their second newest coaster. We got to ride Mako, their third newest coaster. Like, we we're just banging them out of the park today. It was a great day. We had that chicken sandwich, very expensive. Okay, but the coasters, magnificent. On the way out, here's something that's interesting. There is a Guy Harvey shop and you can full out like buy original Guy Harveys. Uh, I don't know about this one in particular. This one I think is a like not an original, but it is like a really nice print, but they did have an original on sale. Oh, right there. There's some originals back there, right? Let's have a look. Yeah, right here. This one's called Over and Under is $9,700 and <laughs> $9,750. And you could own this. This is an original Guy Harvey. Let's see if there's any others. See, these are just aluminum art for 759. That's pretty nice. But yeah, I'm not seeing any other original. Oh, this one's an original right here. It's a little like pen work for 2250. Yeah, some more, 2950, 4900. It's kind of fun. Like if it's not a painting, it's not, you know, it's not $9,000. It's fairly reasonable. $4,000 bluefin tuna, like done with a pen and markers. It's pretty nice. I asked if I can get my annual pass holder discount on the Guy Harvey thing and she said, anything that's under $100, you can get your discount on. Anything over $100, you don't get the discount on. Also, this is nice. Yeah, I like this. Cool looking, I like this like retro rainbowy vibe. I like it. I also love this, $27.99 for this SeaWorld youth shirt. All right, so there you have it. That was our trip out to SeaWorld Orlando to have a look at the progress on Penguin Trek. Very excited for that roller coaster. It looks like a lot of fun. Still a little bit of work to be done. Still a lot of theming to do, but it was neat to get in there and like get a look at how far they've gotten. See where they were at. See what the see what it looks like. See some of the surprises. Some of the stuff we didn't see from outside. Some like we couldn't see what was inside that building, no matter where we looked at it from. Today we got to go into the building 
have a look around. They call it a show box. Have a look around, see how it works, see what the track layout is. See that little dip there in the beginning. It's gonna be super fun little like beginning to the ride. I can't wait to see all of the effects that are going into this. Like I have a feeling there's going to be an interesting exiting moment when you're exiting the building and an interesting entering moment when you're entering back into the building. Also, there's gonna be some effects with some falling ice, some falling rocks. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This is a family coaster, so I can't wait. Very exciting, then we got to ride the coasters. We got to ride Pipeline, we got to ride Icebreaker, and we got to ride Mako. Three fantastic roller coasters, such a fun night. I wanna say thank you to SeaWorld for having us out. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see y'all tomorrow, and now it's time to pay the price. <laughs>